I want to first thank uh, Deidre for inviting us and for uh, the chamber having us here today. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces in here. Um, by way of introduction, even though Josh did introduce me, um, I have several others here from Lakeshore United and Butson Properties LLC, or Butson Sports Complex LLC. To my right is David Beeble. Uh, David's going to be helping me today with uh, some of our visuals and other things, and David has been involved in this from the start. Uh, seated at the table in front of me is uh, Officer Jim Vieser. He's also been involved with us since inception, so these are guys who have been with us the entire way. Um, <clears throat> I am the Vice President and General Counsel of both Lakeshore United and uh, uh, the Butts and Sports Complex LLC, um, and this is a great opportunity for us. We're thrilled to be here today. This is one of these opportunities where we have a tremendous opportunity to share with you what we consider to be one of the most exciting building projects and recreational projects that's come to Sheboygan for some time. And some of you, when you showed up, probably had an opportunity to view some of our visuals here on uh, to my right. This is the schematic of what I'm here to talk about today. This is the facility that Lakeshore United and Butson Sports Complex are looking to develop here in Sheboygan. And we'll talk about not only what that comprises, but how we're going to pay for it. How are we going to run that? How are we going to uh, go through the process of building it? We're going to talk about all those things as we go through this today. Um, but a little bit of introduction, Lakeshore United uh, FC is, a, is Sheboygan's youth soccer club. We have nearly 1,200 kids involved in our programming from junior stars to our academy programs to our select soccer teams to our recreational soccer teams and programs. Um, we are the single largest uh, sports club in Sheboygan County. We have the most membership um, and that's why we decided Look, we've got great facilities here in Sheboygan, but we think this is an opportunity to build something very special. This is a once in a generational type of project as we view it. And we're, we're if you can't tell, we're super excited about all of that today. Um, so to start with, <clears throat> the proposed facility is located on South Business Drive. Uh, most of you are familiar with it. It's about a half mile south of Washington Avenue. And David has put up the, the schematic here and that's what it looks like, obviously, on paper. And we're going to have some other visuals for you to take a look at. But this is, per, this is provided to us by Rettler Corporation, our design engineers on this project. And this is what we anticipate at, upon completion this facility looking like. Um, <clears throat> the site was provided by the Butson family several years ago. Um, upon her passing, she provided this property to the city of Sheboygan under a restrictive covenant. And what that means in English is that the Butson family provided this to the city of Sheboygan in order that it be utilized and developed for sports or recreational purposes. It is a city of Sheboygan property. Uh, it is owned by the city of Sheboygan. And currently, Butson Sports uh, Complex LLC is leasing this particular parcel. It is 55 acres uh, from the city. Um, and we do have several sublets and other things that are going on. but. This is, the, this is the primary facility, and we are under a 25-year lease with the city at present, and we're looking to get started on the development and building processes which have not begun yet. Um, at the outset, I want to tell you something about the development, um, and we're also going to talk about today the time frames. When does all this expect to get off the ground? What, is the, what are those phases going to look like? Uh, and we're also going to talk about, and I think many in the room are very interested in, is there's a lot to like here when we look at it. We look at it from the schematics and the pictures and all the things that we have. But I think the question goes to a lot of you is, well, from an economic standpoint, from an economic impact standpoint, how can this facility not only be a community asset for all of our kids and all of our programming, but how does it affect the rest of us as business owners, as retailers, as people in the community? Um, and we're going to talk at length about that during our presentation today. And uh, we're going to, uh, at the end of our presentation, we're going to ask all of you if you have questions for all of us, and we'll try to do our best today to answer those. So <clears throat> let's first talk about the, the vision of the facility itself. Um, as I mentioned, we, we view this as a community asset. Yeah, it's, it's being developed by Lakeshore United. Yes, it's being developed by Butts and Sports Complex LLC. But Butson Sports Complex LLC isn't just soccer, all right? Primarily, yeah, there's going to be soccer operations. Of course there is. But 
we look at it as a multi-sport facility, multi-use facility, all right? And we're talking about things like uh, other sports, like lacrosse, like rugby, like football, soccer, of course, ultimate frisbee. You can use your imagination and come up with any number of different uses for this particular facility, all right? And, and for us, that's an important selling point in terms of this facility's use and economic impact is it isn't just soccer tournaments, it isn't just soccer leagues, it isn't just Lakeshore United programming. This is here for everybody across the board. And we're looking to be inclusive of that. That's part of the presentation, that this facility can be used by many, many others. <clears throat> now, at present, we're still in some pretty significant discussions at many levels, from the city to various other types of organizations. And we're settling up on design details. We're settling up on construction costs. We are still talking about the overview of the construction plan. There's a lot of moving parts here, everyone. But for today, we think it's very important for the community at large. Maybe you've heard some whispers about it. Maybe you've heard, hey, there's a possible facility out there on the south side. We're going to start today to lay this out for the community so that they can see what this is really all about. Not whispers, not innuendos. That's what this is about, all right? So as a general matter, um, we had uh, initially presented some ideas to the Common Council, to the Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority, um, as well as some of the other city leaders and so forth. And what we got as part of that initial presentation is a lot of feedback, a lot of ideas, a lot of constructive criticisms for, for, for those things. And we've been able to kind of retool our efforts in order to present a workable plan on a workable timetable and have the opportunity to get this built and in use within the next several years. And we're going to go through that a little bit as part of today's presentation. Um, to start with, one of the things that's very important is we can talk a great game. We can tell you all about this. We can show you diagrams. We can show you schematics. We can do all those things. But where the rubber meets the road is when you get a shovel in the ground. When you start seeing construction, when you start seeing things take shape. And as part of our overall plan, we're looking as what to begin as to what we refer to as phase zero. Uh, phase zero is an initial groundbreaking uh, effort, which includes two full grass fields, some parking, and basic infrastructure. This is kind of the, the jump off point to get this started. There, you know, for everybody to go out there and drive by and say, we've got a shovel in the ground. We've got, we've got things moving out there. It's not a concept anymore. There's a shovel in the ground. So that's what we're looking to do. And we're hoping to break ground on that particular phase, phase zero, in the fall of 2020. Um, and we're hoping, and, and again, being in Wisconsin, we know that weather doesn't cooperate that often. We also know that sometimes, you know, there are unforeseen things that come up. But we are hopeful and very optimistic and actually very confident that we're going to be able to get started with completion. That is, get some programming moving in early 2021. We're hoping for full use and full operational use in the fall and late 2021. That's the starting point for all of us. And, and during that time frame, we have a lot of work to do. I think all of you are wondering, well, you know, these are, these are great things, but what's going to be going on while they're building this, while that shovel is in the ground? This group has a lot of things it has to do. We have capital campaigns. We have to seek sponsorships. We have to settle up with Rettler, our design engineers. We have to talk about our construction costs. As to later phases, those are all things that will be going on during that time period. So while the initial shovel is in the ground and things are getting moving, there's going to be more that's coming. And this leads me into phase one, all right, which is uh, that's construction, which is expected for 2022. And that particular aspect of this project, phase one, and Dave is pointing this out, will include four turf fields, artificial turf fields. And turf in Wisconsin, for all of you that have kids in high school sports or kids in youth sports, artificial turf gives you that opportunity and that availability for more playability. That is, it's not determinative of snow or <coughs> rain or other types of weather conditions that normally soccer or other sports would say, 
we can't do that today. We're going to have to cancel. Artificial turf gives us much more flexibility in that regard. So that's going to be part of that initial phase one. It also includes uh, eight grass fields. All right, and that's going to be, as Dave is pointing out, those areas are going to be grass fields. So we're going to have a total of 12 fields, 10, 10 12 fields ready to go in phase one. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about timing for that. There's also something that I think makes this entire project unique. And unlike any other recreational facility project in the state of Wisconsin, in one of the corners, there's a big white building there. That is a dome. There are, only a, there are only a few domes in the state of Wisconsin. Some of you might be familiar with Marquette University's uh, Valley Fields. It has a dome similar to that. That dome is not for public use. This dome, in constructed in phase one, allows for year-round programming. <coughs> From golf, to baseball, to softball, to soccer, to rugby, to all the sports I mentioned previously, the dome is able to accommodate that. And that dome will be constructed for several reasons. Obviously, the playability. That goes without saying. However, that dome also represents an opportunity during the winter months when there are lulls in recreational things. Of course, during the snowy times, we're not able to do the outdoor sports that we ordinarily could. That particular dome will allow for winter programming, and we expect for that dome to be completely filled throughout those months. It will not only supplement uh, kind of what I'll call the downtime or off-peak time, but it also provides us with the availability of unique programming, <coughs> golf academy, all kinds of different things. You can use your imagination. Inside that dome, uh, it'll be uh, uh, able all year round with the turf field to be able to be utilized. Um, Phase one also includes, on top of all the things I just mentioned, it's going to have some additional infrastructure. It's going to have an operational building, parking, restrooms, concessions, all the infrastructure that goes along with this. And you can see this in the schematic surrounding there. There's the parking and other areas and other buildings. <clears throat> um, this is part of the larger facility. And I haven't mentioned part two. There's a neighboring parcel that we're also contemplating utilizing. And you can see on the schematics here, and I'm going to step away from the mic. David is pointing to the area that is neighboring our facility that we've just talked about. That's this area right here on the schematics. Those are going to be additional grass fields for use. That gives us more opportunities for our kids to, to utilize the facility, more opportunities to do different programming, other opportunities for programming such as tournaments, all kinds of activities. And we are in some high level discussions about that particular parcel as well at this point. Moving on to phase what we'll call two, um, and this is slated for 2023, is that we're going to be transferring two of the grass fields to artificial turf at that point for the same reasons I talked about earlier. That is we get more playability, more time. You'll also notice the schematics have lights which we currently don't have specifically. The lights will include, or will provide more playability, more time, more opportunities. And that's a part of the building project as well. There's also another part of phase two, and we think this is a very important part of phase two that you don't see on the schematic. If you see the one dome, phase two will include a second. It will be the only facility of its kind in Wisconsin with two domes on site. And what that means is obviously one dome can provide us with a lot of opportunities. Two domes can fill that gap. The, and we have every indication and every belief, and quite frankly, I think Jim and Dave can speak for me on this, we are supremely confident that those two domes will be filled all year. And again, for those winter months, those off-peak months, those things that when there's lull time, those two domes are a tremendous opportunity for others, other programming, other opportunities. There's not going to be downtime at this facility. It's not going to lay dormant for three or four months when the snow flies. There's going to be an opportunity here for programming in those domes. 
we think that's a huge part of this proposal. Last but not least in terms of phasing is we have a phase three. And phase three uh, includes uh, the completion of all of these phases, following fundraising, following construction, and having these things operationally underway. Phase three, <clears throat> in coordination with the community and possible sports franchises, is to develop a stadium <laughs> area. You'll see on this schematic in the corner that Dave is highlighting, that is a, I believe, a 4,000 seat facility which would draw interest for not only maybe tier one, tier two, tier three type of soccer outfits, but also for things like possibly making a bid for the WIA tournament, probably for WISA State Cup, for various large scale events, uh, what's called the Olympic Development Program, ODP. It's an opportunity for us to showcase some of these events and provide a larger venue by which to do that. Now, is that a ways out? Of course. That's part of phase three. Um, so I know that's kind of flying at 50,000 feet. It's a lot of generalities and it's a lot of pictures. If I had all afternoon, I could probably tell you the breakdown of all these things and bring Dave and Jim up here and we could talk about this till we were blue in the face. However, this concept will be finalized very shortly and we're looking to get moving on this as I indicated and that's the phase zero I talked about earlier. So, after all of this, you're probably all thinking to yourself, all of these things sound great. They look great, the schematics are great, these flyovers, all these things are great. How are you gonna pay for it? How on earth are you gonna pay for this? It's a great question, a fair question. And when we look at this on balance, we're settling on design concept and construction costs and all these other types of things including operational expenses. This group is in high level discussions on various funding sources and they include things such as municipal bonding. They include such things as corporate sponsorships. It includes such things as your grassroots kind of fundraising. These are the kinds of things where we do bake sales, broad fries, buying bricks for walkways, the basics, the things we all know that some of these organizations do. These are all part of the larger financing package. Now, are, is there a lot of work to be done on those? Oh, you bet, absolutely. <coughs> and we have a lot of discussions that we have to have with respect to financing. But we think when we show the concepts and we, as we'll talk about in a minute, the economic impacts for our community, when we look at it on balance, we think that not only is the initial municipal bonding, the corporate sponsorships, the grassroots, that's going to be an investment and that there's going to be a huge return on that investment as we go forward. Once this facility is built, we're looking at it as improving Sheboygan's reputation as a destination. We absolutely expect that to happen and we are very confident that will happen. So all of these things I've talked about in terms of financing are extremely detailed. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if we had all afternoon, I could probably tell you about all those things in some detail. But given that we're still discussing those, we're still settling those things up, those again are part of the planning process. So <clears throat> what many of you, and I've, I've talked with several of you before about this is um, what kind of opportunities, what, what kinds of things is this facility going to provide economically for our community? What, what are the important aspects of what we're looking to do for both tourism, for sports tourism, for our community, for our retailers, all of these folks. And as Dave has put up the graphic, we do have busy times here in Sheboygan. Obviously we have Road America, we have our lakefront, we have the Kohler golf courses, we have so many wonderful amenities here in the Sheboygan area. Um, but a key factor to consider when we talk about economic impacts are what are the busiest times of the year? For us, for Lakeshore, and for our programming, our busiest times are what are called generally off-peak. Fall, winter, spring, early spring, times of the year where Road America doesn't function. The golf courses aren't playable. Well, they might be. 
the point being, we have those opportunities with this facility to expand the opportunities that are out there for recreation, for use, for events. And we think that's a critical component of the initial investment that is building this, all right? So <clears throat> as I mentioned, um, the domes are incredibly important to that model. And what we were able to do as part of our initial presentation, uh, when we talked to the Common Council and various other individuals, the Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority and others, we were able to build in some, uh, you know, some very important aspects of the economic impacts. We, as a group, were able to obtain an economic impact statement from S.B. Friedman. S.B. Friedman is the same group and the same uh, consultant that assisted the Kohler Company with the Town of Wilson golf course development. And what we were able to do by doing that is not have necessarily the duplication of data. They didn't have to recreate the wheel. They were able to pull data that they had utilized from the Kohler project. And a lot of that is built into this, but specifically as to our operations. And I want to go through some of the highlights that are on the visual. Um, the first bullet point at the top is it's anticipated there's going to be 80 to 85 events a year. This includes soccer, any of the numerous sports I mentioned, corporate events, private events. Again, we use our imaginations. We can come up with a lot of things that this facility can host and can be a part of. And this includes our LUFC programming, such as leagues, <coughs> our uh, camps, training, tons of opportunities for not just soccer, but other sports and other activities. So, the next number is a, a pretty sizable one, and this is according to our economic impact statement. One of the goals of tourism, of course, is to do what? To get as many people to our community so that they can utilize all the things we have to offer. With respect to this facility, we would be drawing another 227,000 visitors to this community annually. Now, I'm terrible at math. I went to law school because I can't add. But if you extrapolate over 10 years, it's a big number. Even I can do that math. That's a huge number for this community. That is a lot of people coming in and out of our community every year. The next number down, with all the additional visitors, the EIS, our economic impact statement, says that we'd have 23,500 additional room nights for our hoteliers. Now, all of you know that the Democratic National Convention is coming here. All of you know that we've got the Ryder Cup coming up. There's a huge influx of hotel nights for those events. This is a constant. This is 23,500 room nights annually, a year. And again, if we do the math, you put it over 10 years, of course, that's a big number for everybody. That is a wonderful thing for our hoteliers. The next number down, and whenever we see millions pop up on a screen, those are somewhat eye-popping to some of us. When we look at 3.2 million as up on our screen, the economic impact indicates that the facility and its programming uh, would provide an annual boost to our economy of direct spending, and direct expenditures, <coughs> annually of $3.2 million. $3.2 million for things like hospitality, for our retailers, for the food and beverage, for our favorite restaurants, for our favorite bars, the places we like to go. Our business owners and our hospitality sector, this is a huge influx of dollars. And many of you in this room probably have kids that have been involved in youth sports and have traveled and have been around. And you know that when you take your kids to tournaments or you take your kids to sporting events, you know what you spend. You know that at the end of the day, you come home on Sunday night, you scratch your head and said, how much did we spend this weekend on all of this? That's the number that that represents. And again, being some somewhat mathematically challenged, we can do that over 10 years. I think we know what that number is. The second number is often ignored. And the second number of 4.9 million is what is called indirect economic activity. And, and the input on that is annual. And, and indirect includes things like um, the hiring of vendors. It is 
contractors. It is the purchasing of goods to run the facility. It is um, any kind of services. If we've heard such things as supply chain transactions, you know, that is we have to get things to our facility to make it run. Annually, indirectly, this is for basic things like cutting grass, getting fertilizer, having food available for concessions. All of those things are indirect spending. $4.9 million annually. And you know who the beneficiaries of that are? All of you. Business owners, retailers. That's a big number. And when we talk about community assets and we talk about this being a community-based type of approach, that indirect number is a big one because it gets all of us involved in this facility. Even if we don't have a kid who plays soccer or any of the other sports or we don't have events, it has direct impact on us. And that's a big thing. Last but not least, we hear discussions about jobs all the time. Uh, I mean, Sheboygan County, fortunately, has done very, very well when it comes to uh, employment. However, when we look at this facility, we're looking at adding 57 full-time equivalency jobs. Now, you might say to yourself, well, oh, you know, doing what? Well, what, is, what does that mean, full-time equivalency? These are people who manage the facility operationally, manage groundskeeping, infrastructure, all of the things that a facility like this requires in order to not only maintain, but to improve itself and to run as a well-oiled machine. Those are the types of jobs, full-time equivalency that we're talking about. When I look on balance of, of all of these things, and, and David has pointed this out, we have a multi-purpose -commu multi community sports facility, we have adequate parking, and when we look under the boosting the local economy visual, the total project investment to get it to phase three is $24.8 million when we're done. Some of you are probably like, huge number, big number. Sure is. We acknowledge that. But as I mentioned earlier, this is an investment in our community. It's an investment. It's an opportunity. The construction jobs that go with the construction of this particular facility 162 annual construction jobs. These are the people who grade, the people who build, the subcontractors who put in everything. All of the things that go into putting a place like this together, 162 people are going to have things to do on a full-time equivalency. That's a great thing. And even though it's a temporary thing, it's 162 people working on this project as part of this community. That's a great thing. And again, we talked about the 4.9 million indirect. We also talked about the annual permanent jobs. This just underscores the ability of this particular facility to generate the types of visitors, income. I'll be, I'll be blunt. It's an economic driver. Sports tourism around the country is an absolutely huge industry now. We have communities here in Wisconsin, such as La Crosse, similar size to our own. We have similar sized communities such as Grand Chute in the Fox Valley, Eau Claire. These are towns and, and people who are clamoring to build these kinds of facilities. They want to build them. They want people to come to their community for the very same reasons that we do, because it's great for our local economy. It's great for our business owners. And above all, it's great for all the kids that are involved in these programs that they've got a first-class facility by which to do these things at. As we talked about, I talked about our timelines earlier. We're starting our capital campaign. That's been an ongoing process throughout. If we move through the dots on timelines phase one, which is generally referred to as zero, um, we're looking to start construction in 2020 with a grand opening in fall of 2021. We have opportunities for our local business owners. I'm not going to give you a sales pitch. It's not why I'm here. But we do have opportunities. We want to get our local business owners involved. We want them to be a part of putting this together. And we've hired a marketing firm to help us do that. And they can talk with our local business owners as we get further along in this process about bringing those things to fruition, things like naming rights, things like naming fields, naming infrastructure. All of those things are a great part of having our local business owners be involved in this process, be a part of all of this. 
<clears throat> what I want to do at the end today is to open this up for questions and I'm going to kind of wrap up a little bit. I've thrown a lot of things at you today and there's a lot of concepts and you probably have a number of questions. Um, but I do want to underscore this, is that we believe that the economic impacts of this facility far outweigh the initial investments of constructing it. There is no question about that. And we look at it on balance as having our entire community, hoteliers, restaurants, bars, retailers, all of our local contractors, all of our local people that would be involved in putting this thing together truly a community asset, truly something that the entire community has been involved in. Not just something where we pay it lip service, but something where you're actually on the front lines of doing it. Um, and, and we're excited about that opportunity. Um, what I have done um, and what I would encourage you to do is that if you have specific questions for me or for David or for Jim, visit us at www.lakeshoreunitedfc.org. You can email any one of us directly saying, Joe, I saw your presentation. I have some questions for you. You can email those directly to me. You can do the same for David. You can do the same for Jim. And we will get back to you promptly. We will answer any questions that you have about this project and about this development. Um, and ultimately, and I'll, I'll wrap up with this before our Q&A session, is that we are excited about what we're doing here. As Dave can attest to and as Jim can attest to, we have spent six years to get to this point in various forms and in various opportunities with various people. This for us today is a great opportunity to reach out to people that we haven't talked to before. And again, I want to thank Deidre for the opportunity to be here today. It was a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm hoping that there'll be lots of questions that we can talk about, but we're hoping you'll join us and we'll put this together. And Sheboygan is going to have another fantastic asset for its community. We're hoping that day is coming very soon. So on behalf of David and Jim, thank you for having us. If there are questions, please, by all means, let us know. I'm here to answer them.